Hi, today we're talking about Cologne Celeste. This is the latest perfume from Celine. It was launched in December, 2023. I was actually in Toronto and I was walking around and I had sprayed my arm with some things, some perfume, and <laughs> I was in the Celine boutique and I saw that they put Cologne Celeste out. So I was able to sample it. I sprayed it on my other arm. And then as I continued to walk around and shop, I really found myself coming back to smell Cologne Celeste again and again. So then when I got back home, I ended up ordering a bottle because I wanted to experience it at home and kind of a little bit more um, in a relaxed atmosphere. But then we had an incredible cold snap where it was so cold. And this is definitely more of a fresh, summery kind of perfume. But now it's warmed up. It's 11 degrees today. It definitely feels like it's going to be warm for the next little bit and I've been able to wear it a little bit more so I'll share my thoughts on it and what I think about it so we before we get into how it smells and what it reminds me of and all that stuff let's talk about some of the boring things like packaging and price the packaging for this perfume is different and I think it's because it's part of a bath and body line that Celine has come out with Really what they want you to do is indulge in a bathing ritual when you wear this perfume. So they have the soaps, they have a bath milk, they have a body oil, and they're all perfumed the same. And that's with this Cologne Celeste fragrance. The last part of the ritual, I guess, is to sp splash or spray yourself with this cologne, okay? So the packaging is different. This is a spray. Um, a twist top you can put a spray inside here but then the cap doesn't fit on top so I think that takes away a little bit from the luxury aspect of the Celine perfumes the bottle is also different it's not fluted it's got plain glass and so that's different this is my bottle of night clubbing you can see it's got the fluted glass on the side it also has a magnetic cap which is really nice I love a magnetic cap the box for Cologne Celeste is kind of more of a basic box, for lack of a better word. And the box for nightclubbing and all the other perfumes have a really nice grow grain ribbon on them. And they are just a little bit more luxurious. The price for Cologne Celeste is $395 Canadian for 250 ml so you are getting quite a large bottle the ball uh the price for night clubbing is 350 dollars for 100 ml and that's the same for all their perfumes so if you're doing price per ml calculations i think cologne celeste actually ends up being a little bit cheaper um personally i don't really do that kind of a calculation because i think that once you start to look at price per ml you're not really thinking about what you want to wear and for me it just like takes out a little bit of the enjoyment of just wearing a perfume i think if you think that celine perfumes are too expensive you're right they are very expensive but if you want something that smells different than everything else that's out there, I think they offer a lot of things. So for me, night clubbing was something that I hadn't experienced anywhere else before. So I felt like I could justify the price in adding it to my collection. I actually don't feel the same way about Cologne Celeste. I don't think that this is a new and exciting scent profile that's never been experienced before. In fact, when I first smelled it, it reminded me exactly of 4711. And this is an iconic Eau de Cologne. They say it's the original Eau de Cologne, but it's not really the original. It just happens to be one of the oldest perfumes ever. Um, it's actually from the city of Cologne in Germany, and it has really beautiful packaging. And people say that Tom Ford Neroli Portofino was inspired by this cologne. And I really think that they're right about that. He even used the same colors in the packaging. And I think it's kind of like a wink to people that, that know about 4711 because it's kind of like, if you know, you know, um, I'm using the same colors and it's the same scent profile, but 
Force or Neroli Portofino is just like a little bit better than 4711. And in that way, I actually think that although Cologne Celeste definitely references 4711, I also think that it's better. I have 4711. I was immediately able to reference it when I smell this first. But I think this takes from 4711 and still makes it Celine and I love that about it. Uh, the other thing I want to mention before really talking about the notes that are in this perfume is that again they're calling it Cologne Celeste and on the back on the box it says Cologne Celeste but on the bottom of this box it says Eau de Cologne and then it says 80.05% volume which is interesting because when something is 80.5% or 0.5% volume, usually when you look at perfume, it's labeled as what concentration of alcohol is in that perfume. So 80%, when it says 80% volume on the bottom of a box, that means that it's 80% alcohol and 20% other materials. Those materials can be the perfume oil. It could be something else that's working to make up the body of the uh, perfume. Really, that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting an eau de parfum or an eau de cologne. Like it's, you can't judge just by um, reading the percentage of alcohol that's on the bottom of the box. But it is a good indication for how strong or how weak your perfume is going to be sometimes. Uh, there's eau de colognes that are just really strong and there's eau de parfums that are not strong at all and don't last a very long time. So you can use it as a guide, but it's never just the end all and be all of how strong a perfume is going to be. You kind of have to wear it for yourself and see. But to me, when I saw that it said 80% uh, volume on the bottom of this box, I feel like this means that it's a little bit stronger than your usual eau de colognes. Uh, they might not have put very much perfume oil in the actual formula. Maybe there's something else in here as well. Maybe it's something moisturizing or something that blends with the perfume to make it last a little bit longer um, but I thought that that was interesting that they're calling this an eau de cologne but it's still just an 80% volume alcohol and just for reference when I look at my nightclubbing box it actually says 80.4% volume and it says eau de parfum and I think that nightclubbing actually is really a eau de parfum type of sense it it has decent lasting power it changes as you wear it and it's definitely stronger than some of the eau de toilettes that i have for reference when i look at my 4711 bottle it says 86 percent volume on it which means that it's more alcohol and uh, less perfume oil but it also says that there is some water in this formula so that is interesting the other thing that I mentioned before is that this does come with a spray and you put the spray in the bottle but once the sprayer is in here you can't actually fit the lid on top and I hate that. I think that really detracts from the experience of the perfume because every time you wanna spray it on, you either have to put the spray in. What I did for myself is I just decanted it into a 10 ml spray bottle and I'm using that whenever I wanna wear this perfume. That's fine, but it's probably not ideal for everybody else. Okay, so Cologne Celeste, let's talk about how it actually smells. And like I said before, if you're familiar with 4711, you kind of already know. Both of these are Neroli perfumes, and Neroli is quite green. It's a little bit floral, but it also has like a bitterness to it, which is, which is nice. It kind of makes everything 
really squarely in like a unisex category because it's not something that leans very feminine or something that leans very masculine. Um, this is my little travel spray of it. And what I found when I've been wearing Cologne Celeste is that it actually is quite a light perfume. And that's a nice thing, especially if you're wearing it in warmer weather, because you can spray lots of it on. You can wear it from head to toe and you're never going to feel like it's overpowering you or it's taking over or that it's maybe offending people that are near you or in the same room as you. So that's kind of nice. It really is more of a sunny perfume. You can use it to layer. You can um, reapply it throughout a throughout the day kind of reminds me of wearing linen or a lot of white which is what I'm wearing today and really just being laid back and enjoying a warmer more peaceful time for yourself definitely different than the snow that is currently outside but really a great perfume or scent profile to wear in sunny weather the thing that makes it different from all the other Neroli, Citrusy, 4711, Cologne type perfumes that are out there is that the dry down of this is still a little bit powdery, which is very typical of everything in the Celine uh, perfume lineup. And I got like a creaminess as this warmed up on my skin and that is really enjoyable and almost addictive and I think it's the ambrette that gives it that that feeling that gives it a freshness but also a skin like muskiness which is really enjoyable I definitely don't get that from 4711 and if we're comparing the two I actually find 4711 to be quite harsh so I don't know if it's the alcohol or maybe just like the combination of Neroli that they use with other things but I feel like it's very very green and very sharp and Cologne Celeste is more of a delight it's it's actually so so easy to wear because it's not sharp it doesn't cut you but it just feels refreshing and fun and it turns into this warm musky skin scent as it heats up on your skin and it's still refreshing and it's still green so if you like green perfumes this is a good one to try but it's not too uh, harsh in its greenness which is really nice I think that's like a really nice balance to have where you can be fresh and clean but also not smell like laundry detergent or like a lemon cleaner this doesn't go into that category either which is really beautiful it kind of just reminds me of being on like a vacation island like I kind of like got the image of white lotus and this is what I imagine like that fancy hotel on season two of white lotus to smell like like it smells fresh and clean and green and sunny and warm and everybody's wearing linen but there's it's not just boring it's not pretty and it's not just cleaner you know it, it really has this this warm musk that makes it addictive to smell. There's nothing boring about it. I think it's just a different take on the cologne, like the classic 4711 cologne category. If you like that type of a scent, but for whatever reason, Neroli Portofino or 4711 hasn't really worked for you, I think that Cologne Celeste could maybe be something that might be up your alley. I know for me, it's definitely the one that I like to wear because I really love the dry down of it. I like that it got a little bit sweeter. I like that it's creamy. It's so well blended. Um, I like that it's not too harsh or too sharp. And I like that you can spray a lot of it and not have to worry about it being too, too strong. So I really enjoy that as well. I sprayed my hair. I sprayed my clothes when I wear it. And I just... I love doing that. I think it's just a little bit more refined, a little bit more elegant, and really a cologne for someone that wants to indulge themselves in that process of wearing a fresh, bright perfume. 
So before I close here today, I think it's interesting to see brands coming out with something that is lighter and easier to wear instead of going in the other direction where you're coming out with something really strong and is a little bit more difficult to wear. I think for me, if I'm spending a lot of money on perfume, I prefer going the lighter route than the stronger route. I think when you wear really strong perfume, you have to be careful who you're around. Um, you have to be careful with, you know, what you're going to be doing that day. And then if it gets stronger and stronger as you wear it, I think it actually, you know, runs the risk of getting to be annoying to wear. So I don't like perfumes that are really strong. And I've said that before. I've also said that I think the trend is going towards lighter perfumes instead of stronger perfumes. And I still don't think I'm wrong because earlier this year, Dior also launched a baby perfume and that one's done by Francis Kirkjan. They're calling it Bon Etoile and their price point is $310 for 100 ml so again pricey for perfume that you're spraying on top of babies and i think it's a perfume water so again they're not going the eau de parfum route or even eau de cologne they're actually going into water and sometimes water perfumes are just not as long lasting but i definitely want to get my hands on one of those perfumes they are launching it in two different colors there's like a peachy pinky color and then like a greenish blue color um, I definitely want a bottle of that. I want to smell it. I'm all about the baby perfume because I like how light and effervescent they usually are and really easy to wear. And I love powdery perfumes, so I'm okay with that. The other thing that recently launched is Chanel Chance Eau Fresh EDP. So they launched a fresh perfume that's in an uh, eau de parfum concentration so a little bit stronger but still super fresh now the chance line i feel like is targeted towards a younger demographic so i get that they're trying to give them something different to buy because like we know from all these stories about you know younger kids going into sephora and having these elaborate skincare routines they want to give that population something that they can have. And if they're looking for something a little bit stronger, that's interesting. But also, it's still an eau fraiche. So it's still supposed to be a fresh perfume, but maybe just a little bit stronger. But anyways, I think that this is like a new trend where we're going to see things that are a little bit lighter. That doesn't mean that they're going to be less expensive. But um, I don't want a beast mode perfume. I think that if you shower and you can still smell the perfume, that that is not a good thing. And people always reach out to me and tell me about that, that they buy perfume and then they don't like it and they try to wash it off, but it doesn't come off. Like that to me is not the type of perfume that I would want to have. One more perfume that this reminded me of, and that's Eau de Sens by Diptyque. I only have the hair mist. This, again, is a very green Neroli perfume. I think it's a little bit more masculine. To me, it's way more green, and Cologne Celeste is more citrusy, and again, creamier and it really has ambrette in it and ambrette kind of smells like a warm shower like it smells like your skin after a warm shower and i love that scent profile so maybe if eau de sens were combined with fleur de peau from diptyque that is what you would get when you smell eau de or cologne celeste because it starts off kind of green and citrusy and then is like warmer and creamier and just a little bit more lovely and easy to wear and perfect for the summer or whenever you just want to relax that's it for me thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye